because we are just waiting. We are going to start at exactly. Okay, all right, good. I recording to cloud. Okay, thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this session of digital literacy for educators. Um, this session is actually going to be interactive. It's a five-day training program organized by Wall Foundation. And then during this training, we're learning a lot of FX skills. When I say FX skill, I mean um educational technology skills and tools that will be needed to make you become a 21st century educator. Some of you, these tools, you already know them. Some of you, um, you don't know them. So please, if you already know some of the things you're taking, we just want to carry everybody along. So just be patient with us because we don't want to start midway because you know we have people that already have knowledge of this training. We have people that don't have any knowledge of this training. So we are dealing with different breeds, different educators, different teachers from different angles in our society. Some have tech skills, some don't have tech skills. So please bear with us as we start. So before we start, I want you on the chat box to drop before we continue this training. I want you on the chat box Can you hear me? Sorry, network. So um, let me know where you're joining us from. If you're joining us from Lagos, Abuja, Eboin State, Akwaibo, let me know where you're joining us from. I'll be reading through the chats. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so please can you comment probably when I jump off I do not see any please can you comment on the chat where you're joining us from I want to know where you're joining us from so on the chat just type your name like for instance I can say Susan I'm Susan Kalaba so on the chat just let us know where you're joining us from and then we can proceed Can you hear me? Elijah, can you hear me? I hope I'm not talking to myself. All right, okay, fine, thank you. Okay, name and location. Odwag James Edson from Aquarium State. Okay, I have Moses from Abia State. Thank you very much, Moses. I have Chuku, Chuku Ikem. I hope I pronounced your name well from Anambra State. Okay, um, who did I miss? Who did I miss? I have um, Chine, Chinere from Ebony State. So just let us, Margaret from Port Harcourt. Awesome. So let's know where you're calling us from. And since the virtual meeting, we can meet ourselves, we'll get to know ourselves better. Subsequently, during the other days of the training, we'll be playing an online game to, yeah, spice this training up. And then we we'll get to know more about each other. If you have not joined our Google Classroom, please join. And if you not fill in our form, please fill the form.
Okay, we have Catherine from Alhambra State. Okay, so before I start, I'm going to present about WOW Foundation. A lot of you will be asking what's WOW Foundation, like what's this training about? This training is meant to equip teachers with educational technology, technology skills, and it will help you personally as a, an educator, business-wise, and then it's going to help you become a better 21st century teachers. So of these tech skills, you know them, some you actually don't know them. So we are going to be mixing a breed of the ones you know and the ones you don't know, so that will carry everybody along. All right, so I hope you're all seeing my screen. If you're seeing my screen, just type yes on the chat. It's going to be an interactive class. If you see my screen, just type yes, sorry. And if I'm fast, let me know that I'm fast, I'll come back. Okay, so I'm going to look at the chat. Yes, please. All right, thank you. Okay, I have Oti Christiana from Ebony State. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right, so um, what this training is a teacher's training organized by World Foundation and ah. Uh, now, WAL Foundation, the full meaning of WAL Foundation means working to advance science and technology education for African data in 2020. In 2007, though now our headquarters is in Abuja, um, Kigali, Rwanda, and in te Texas. Now, what are our core values? Our core values in this organization is to empower women, African women, Leaders that, and then equip them with skill entrepreneurial training and to increase the pipeline of African women entering science and technology fields. Okay. Um, give it time. I think my system is hanging. Okay. All right. Okay. So now um they are with the digital literacy program for educators and we also have the stem training which is targeted towards science teachers now, now um what we we're doing now is basically for everybody whether private school in a public school a pri um, primary or secondary school this is aimed towards educators generally so, the training we are having now. What's those things? At least the name of our person to test your knowledge. Probably tomorrow we'll be playing an online game and then we'll see how many persons can remember very well. Okay, so teachers are the biggest influence. Teachers are the biggest influence on our young population in Africa. If we do not train them effectively, it will be difficult to have a national impact and to train the next generation contributory workforce that will strengthen the continent economy through technology innovation that is from our founder dr noma okora for she's the founder and president of wow foundation okay then stem training like i said about stem training we offer stem training also to teachers we can offer in case you have a school or you're the owner of a school i want us to come and train your teachers it's hands-on we'll come to your location you will bring a stem kit or you buy stem kit and then you train teachers on hands-on activity stem what she's holding now is this an adrenal board and then this is teaching about life series you'll be teaching about so many things physics Instead of you teaching, it's easier for a child to remember when they do it themselves. So these are the things we do in our STEM um, training session. And then in digital literacy program, which is what we are having currently, uh, we teach tech tools such as database Spark, Google Form, how to create Google Form. We teach you how to create a website without having to code anything. We'll take you through the basics and the fundamentals of Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, document, digital Padlet, quizzes, and a host of other things which you'll be learning today. Some you already know, some you'll be getting more information about as the training goes. Now, the aim of this training is to give teachers the opportunity to become the top of their game. Now, if we can recall, recall during COVID, 
A lot of teachers had to improve their tech skills. Training had to move from in-person class to virtual training. So the aim of this training is to equip you with all the relevant tools to make you a 21st century teacher. So that the, the digital will be in a modern society used with the aid of technology. This is what we do at Wow Foundation. We increase STEM education across Africa. We increase the quality of education and computer science education in Nigeria and across Africa. We expose students to career choices, to have knowledge about STEM and ICT related careers. For our teachers training, over 70 million teachers need to be trained to ensure we meet the 2030 SDG goal to educate every child, and there is a need to train more teachers across Africa. For instance, today I had this experience, and this experience was I was calling, most of you got calls from us. I was calling, and then some persons don't check their mail, like teachers. Please check your mail regularly. We had to resort to calling. So please check your mail regularly. I hope I'm not too fast. I want to give room to my other colleagues to take what they ought, what they ought to take today. And then our wow STEM kit, you can visit our website and our Google site, which will be shown to you today. Um, this We have STEM kit on robotics. We have Adreno bots. We have um, solar power. We have 3D printers. These are kits we use. We have snap circuit. Those are things we need, we use to um, incorporate into our training to make it more hands on to teachers. Okay, now this is how we sponsored by Botchmo Foundation and by a donor, Mrs. Obi. So please, um, we are encouraging you to take advantage of this training, even though you. I be beneficiary, we believe that even as you partake of this training, you should be able to use the same training. The idea is use the same training to impact teachers and students within your vicinity. Share knowledge. In one foundation, we totally believe in sharing knowledge. All right. So um, what we do also, we have, we connect teachers here in Africa to teachers outside Africa and we, outside Africa, like in US and the UK, so what we call our local classroom, the Level Up Village program. Teachers get you stand a chance to be part of this training program. If you're interested, please let us know and then we'll see what we can do. Okay, so please meet our team. We have more team members. This will be updated soon. If you check our Google website, to see our team. So this is um, Dr. Norma, Mrs. Ebele is, should I say, the, the pioneer of this particular training. She started the training during COVID and we all delve into it full-heartedly. And then we've been able to train over 600 teachers online. And um, we have um, Love it. she's a COO. We have Lucy. Lucy is a program director. We have Faith, is a uh, associate. Of, um, and then I have myself. You just see most of our information on our Google site, a more detailed information about us on our Google site. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And then if you have, I'm going to look at the chat. If you have any questions, please. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know on the chat. All right, thank you very much. I guess my network is shaky, so I just have to use, make do with what I have. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? At least you know a little bit more about WOW Foundation now. Awesome. Okay, so Love It is um, our Chief Executive Operating Officer. Uh, she was going to be taking us on like, knowing our teaching or learning styles. That's what she's going to be taking us. We discovered that a lot of teachers just teach. You just know that you can teach 
but you don't know the kind of style you use in teaching. So I sent a mail before now. Now, if you've taken your test, which I believe that she's going to, sorry, my network is bad. It's Nigerian faculty, please forgive me. So um, if you've taken the test, let us know what your teaching style is on the chat while Lovet comes up or start presenting. Lovet, are you there? Hello, Lovet. Okay, Lovet. So please, um, let's welcome Lovet. She's going to be taking us on, uh, on teaching styles. Yes. So if you've not taken the test, take the test and let us, just a short test. Don't just be, I can teach. I know if you give me anything to teach, I can teach. So let's know the kind of um, teacher, teacher style you use in teaching. It's going to help you a whole lot in improving your, how you teach. Okay, love it. Somebody asks a question, will there be any certificate at the end of the training? Yes, there will be certificate at the end of the training. Definitely, there will be certificate at the end of the training. Okay, love it, you can take over now. Um, Susan, am I hi everyone? Good afternoon. Uh, this is Love It. Susan already did the introduction. And I'll just go right in. Um, Susan, can I share my screen with you? Yes, you can. Okay, for those of us that haven't taken the test, please um, find time to take the test. And We'll come back to it in the next class to review what your teaching style is. But for now, I'm just going to start um, the presentation for today. Uh, Okay, for teaching styles, uh, we have five teaching styles. Authority and lecture or lecture style, demonstrator or coach style, facilitator or activity style, delegator or group style, hybrid or blended style. So these five categories serve their various purposes. As a teacher in Nigeria, if you find yourself in the secondary school uh, setting, lower primary and secondary school setting, we expect that you should be more of a demonstrator and a blended teacher. So blended teacher com comprises of facilitator, demonstrator, and group style teacher. But we don't expect you to be an authority teacher or a lecture style teacher. That these are people that like code context, uh, you find them in your in conferences, in the universities and all that. So just imagine that you're a biology teacher and you're coming up as an authority, your teaching staff is authority or lecture staff. The students won't be able to blend in in that classroom or flow with the topic or subject that is being taught. But as a demonstrator teacher, you're, you're able to use resources, bring in tools in the classroom, engage your learner effectively, and tell them, sorry guys, there's training going on in the hall. So you ensure that you're able to carry everyone along. So here you're seeing the main coach, you're coaching your student, you're walking them through um, what is being taught and they're following. I'm trying to, okay. Then a facilitator activity teacher. This is a teacher that if you're teaching, um, what subject you want to use? If you're teaching motion, for instance, this kind of teaching style, you'll find this teacher bringing resources that explain that concept of motion and probably allow students to explore and create their own findings to be able to tell if something is in motion or not. So the delegator group such as one that you a teacher that teaches in group settings. So this teacher probably works better in the lab, like chemistry and physics or average lab. 
biology lab, we put students in groups for them to solve a problem together. So we can also find this kind of learning style in the Montessori teaching uh, method, where students are being put in groups to solve problems or to, to figure out tasks. Uh, in groups. So we encourage our secondary school teachers or lower primary to be more of a, of a demonstrator, a facilitator, a blended teacher. That way we are not only building the learning community, we are also building an innovative community because you're utilizing resources around you, you're bringing in tools, you're actively in engaging your students to participate in whatever you are doing and teaching them. That way they will never go, they will not forget whatever you thought because you brought tools to classroom. You involve them in the learning approach. You do not leave them behind. They are part of that subject, they are part of that topic uh, while you are teaching. So it's good for us to absorb this learning styles and it will help us build it. So I'm going to go right into uh, teaching methods. Um, so we have ten teaching styles that you have to adapt to for remote learning. Some of us find ourselves in Zoom classes, uh, online classroom, or even in-person classroom. And with the pandemic, a lot of things have changed. Most probably, you move from one school to another, and you're finding it difficult to to stabilize or work with the learners that you're that you're meeting. And also, we have situations where you're probably taught lower primary and you're finding you found yourself in primary five. The learning styles for that age will be different. You are still trying to find your feet around it. There are styles, there are methods for you to navigate through this um, process. One is get to know your platform. If you're using a tech tool to teach, you're using like Zoom for instance, you can find how to use Zoom. Understand how to mute or mute your student, turn on videos, turn on videos, share your screen, you know, little things like that. So you are in charge of that classroom. Create an online environment. The way you manage your on site class, you think you should manage your online classroom. It shouldn't be out of control. Students should not be allowed to have access to share their screen without being um, told so. Engage your learners online, be organized. They can tell when you're not organized. If you're organized, they will follow suit. Use a variety of instruction strategies. Be present. Provide ongoing feedback. Collaborate with, your, with other teachers. Don't work in silence. Reflect on lessons being taught, lessons you've worked off in. Maximize your professional development. Like you're here now in this just training. You're equipping yourself with new things, new ideas. Don't stop after this. If there are other trainings that you think will be of benefit to you, keep growing, keep learning. There is no limit to what you can do. So for getting to know your platform, this is so important. So that you're using a completely new system or a familiar system. The key is to know when it's what it can and what it cannot do. Get familiar with the platform. Some um, you've seen teachers go from go from um, low, what they call low resource classroom to highly resource classroom. What I mean is you're in a classroom where you just chalk board to teach. Now you see yourself in a classroom where you're using a slide that is a projector in your classroom. You're, you only use computer to project. There are classrooms like that that exist in this country. So for you to be able to thrive, you need to get familiar with this platform, with this setting. Get comfortable. Don't come into the classroom and, you, and be suggesting or be scared. Or, no, learn how to use. You can still after school to figure out how the platform works, ask questions. Google is a giant. You can ask fellow teachers as well. You're confident to give your students confidence in you. Just know that these students are they were born in computer age. They are 10 times, most times, smarter in terms of technology. In terms of technology, in terms of technology, um, then than we. So if you're in classroom and able to, you don't have to turn on a projector. They know they see you. They might not say anything to you, but they are definitely losing confidence. Most online communication platforms allow file sharing. If you're using Zoom, if you're using like Google Classroom, whatever uh, communication platform you're using with your students, you should be able to get a hold of it 
um, such as interactive whiteboards. Um, this season will be taking us through what the whiteboards, what whiteboards does. Mm -hmm. You can hear me. Oh wow. So, Lovett, I can hear you. I can hear you, Lovett. Okay. Oh. So, the second one is create online classroom environment. So, it's one thing to run a classroom environment, it's another thing to own it. As an online teacher, as an online teacher, it is just as important to create a safe and supportive environment as a physical classroom. Like today, we are here. We are using this as a as a testing or let's use it as a what's the word as a guide my colleagues just on the other floor muting admitting students admitting teachers rather and ensuring that everything is in order i'll be able to do that myself if you just me have if me if i'm just going to use uh, all the courses for today but what we're able to delegate that uh, ask him to help me do that. But in a situation where you're just coming out doing that, you need to be able to create the safe space for your student. Let them know that uh, bullying, online bullying, online like texting, when class is going on, things you shouldn't do in the like physical classroom shouldn't be brought to the online classroom. And even when you're in the online and physical classroom, take charge of your class. Um, some most schools don't even allow spanking and all that. Try as soon as possible to take charge of your classroom. Communicate calmly to your students. Know when to affirm the statement of them. Students feel secure in their own in their own surroundings. So you need to be in those on who speak and when they speak. Classroom management is very important. My volume is too low. Can you turn on your own volume? I don't think it's mine. Right. Engage with the learners. You are the leader, you are in charge, you are in control of the learning. You need to be visible, you need to be available. Set, set timelines where you are available to help and answer questions. You cannot be available for four hours, so you need time to wait for two online to online classes to teach. That and the way to reach one of the students. You are the one in charge. Hello, Lovett, can you hear me? We can't hear you. Okay, for engaging with the learner, I think you are in charge, you are the teacher, you need to take on not the student. I'm breaking. Wow, thank you. Okay. As an educator, things like this can happen, right? And it's Working with younger like students it can be frustrating where the teacher has been kicked out of the Zoom room, Zoom call, and then the students are just only one bed. So if you come back, just like I'm doing, own your class back, manage them, apologize. Susan has apologized on my behalf. Um, it's something I couldn't avoid. We have about three internet network connection here, but for some reason, Three of them just failed at the same time, but we are back on the ground. So I was talking about engaging with your learners. You are in charge. You need to be in control. You need to be visible and available, but within limits. You don't have to be available two for seven. Let them know when and when not to reach. Uh, okay. The fourth one is be organized. Materials. So here we're talking about materials. When organizing a lesson plan, think like your students. What would they be expecting? If I'm a student, will this material be of great use to me? When I teach this, will, it, will I easily understand math if I'm using shape? Will I easily understand counting if I'm using um, bottle cup? Will I easily understand um, gravity if 
like things are gliding down from the sky or like if I have resources to explain that. With that, it will help you to organize your material to suit your learners. And remember, the goal here is for your learners to understand the information you're trying to pass to them. If they don't get it, the purpose has been defeated and it will reflect in their national exams where they are unable to pass national exams or even their class exams. So think like a student when you're preparing your lesson plan. The resources needed to, your resources needs to be easy to find, easy to work on, easy to access. Cope with a system, come up with a system that is consistent and user friendly. Explain methodically where things are and what exactly they do. Even if your like your your site, your phone site should be consistent, the software you're using with your student, easy to use with zero stress from your end and the student end. Understand that there's some things sometimes you want to bring in cool ideas to the class. But for the age you're working with, are they able to use it? How easy will it be with, for them? So when you're thinking about materials you want to bring to the class, think of accessibility how easy to be, and the understanding as well. Resources, make sure your own system is well organized. If you're working from the computer, you're using a computer, create files for each class, give clear titles so it's easy for you to find and it's clear when you save them. If you're on site, on site teacher, make sure like your notes are clean, the tools, your, your, your writing pads, the your labs everything is put together and when students come in or when you're delivering your lecture it's not difficult if you're using um cloud storage or online storage so like google drive dropbox use um names that you can easily uh relate with so it's easy for you to find and trace them life the life of a teacher that this is about you now the life of a teacher both online or in person can often feel unstructured exactly as that of the student. So when you're thinking for yourself, also think for your students because without them, there will be no you. Without you, there will be no them. Keep to a timetable for work and breaks. Take time away from the screen, from the class. Plan some other activity into your day. Wearing the same teaching clothes you usually wear helps place you mentally in the classroom. So this is for teachers that are this is for teachers that are in online classroom. So as I'm going in some classrooms, you can see I'm professionally dressed. This is the outfit I'll wear to an on-site training. So if I'm wearing probably my nightwear or my house clothes, I won't feel mentally that I'm in a classroom. But now I'm wearing a professional outfit. There's, it's a psychology effect, psychological effect um, telling me, oh, you're in work mode. You need to be professional in whatever you're doing. Changing afterwards takes you away from the lesson. So after this class, say I'm in my house, but I'm in the office now. I just finished this classroom. Um, automatically, I will change my outfit to my houseway. And that way, it reduces like some level of stress for me. So while you're teaching and being involved and helping out your students, also take our time for yourself because we need a healthy teacher. Don't get sloppy by teaching in your pajamas or any house clothes. If you're wearing, if you are at home, if you're in person, look smart to your class. Try, you, they say you, you address the, you dress the way you want to be addressed. Look smart to school, dress well, be neat, trim your hair, keep your hair clean, trim your nails. Make sure you're looking appealing and very presentable to your students because you're, the one adult that they see every day they come to school and you're showing, giving them the image of a professional life as a student and it's you they're looking at to say, oh, this is how professionals dress, this is how a teacher looks, this is how a teacher should look. Don't give them the wrong impression when you're teaching or by how you look. Use a variety of instruction strategies. We are fortunate to have technology to create a virtual learning environment that allows us to collaborate, engage, just as well as if we are in the classroom. It's a combination of resources and styles. Create a blend of traditional learning styles with newer ones. When you're including audio or visual tools, 
a mix of activities can make the content more interesting and exciting. Increase student engagement with teachers and other learners. Engage students who are not in the room during the lesson. The course should be mixed fraught of discussion, collaboration, and hands-on exercise. If you're sending assignments, again, it's important to mix the style of work sent. Don't just put the text and full stop, like straight on. Make it fun for them so that when they are doing their homework, they are getting there's some sort of hands-on activity for them to try out why they are getting the work done. Be present. If you're doing an online classroom, it needs to be by your screen to answer questions, to give support and manage the class. If you're receiving work online at a specific time, you need to respond. You cannot let the lesson run. However, answering every discussion board posed by every student in an online classroom will break you. Manage your time. Don't be available to for seven. Don't turn on, it's not possible when you're managing a class size of 30, both in physical and online classroom, because you're working, probably you're working with 40 minutes um, duration, say 40 minutes duration class. You'll be unable to do one on one interaction with 80 of them. Out of the 30 questions, out of the 30 students, 10 are asking, asking questions, similar questions. So you, I would, I would advise that let your students ask their questions, then you take time to give your feedback. You might end up giving just three feedback or responses to 30 questions I've asked because they're similar questions. When you are regularly present and engaged in online classroom, your students are more likely to be the same way you are in the physical classroom. Provide ongoing feedback. Such as feedback is essential in the classroom, it's also done, needs to be done in online. In fact, it needs to be done more in an online classroom. An online learner can feel very alone because they're at home connecting with you. They don't always have the visual support uh, or group around them. When teaching online, your feedback should help create the experience that the lesson is informative, engaging, motivational for the learner. It should be continuous and constructive, your feedback. Your feedback should be as soon as possible so that the students can clearly identify what is wrong or right. Um, the eighth point here is collaborate with other teachers. The best teachers are the ones who share ideas and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this new, can you hear me now? In this new situation, experienced teachers and younger teachers may, in, may be involved in this kind of role reversal. Some platforms allow co-hosting of lessons. So we'll, I think this is, so I'm not trying to throw stones, but with government teachers, government school teachers, we've seen that the older experienced teachers tend not to relate with the younger teachers. But forgetting that a lot has changed in terms of technology and delivery method, we encourage our older experienced teachers to collaborate more with the younger teachers, same with the younger teachers, collaborating more with the older experienced teachers. That way, learning or the role will be reversal. They can learn and share ideas for common ground. You can share resources online, share using useful websites, share technical know-how, and sometimes just still feel part of the teaching team again. If you're a teacher and you're inside it, you won't go far. But if you're working as a teaching team, it will help your course and also help your students. Uh, some courses or some top topics are similar. So imagine you're doing electricity, chemistry, and then there's electricity in physics, and the physics and chemistry teacher are collaborating together. Imagine how their various classrooms will be. You will ask similar questions. You follow through from where the other left off when you're attending to your students. It will be fun because students will be looking forward to having both of you in class and ask similar questions. Probably questions that wasn't answered in chemistry will be transferred to the physics class and the physics teacher can take it off from there and go back to the chemistry teacher to discuss further on that content. So we, we employ you all to engage with each other. You mustn't even uh, limit it to the school you work 
work with. You can engage with teachers from other schools, other neighboring states, because there's, there's um, they say you work, uh, you cover miles when you work in groups. You will run faster when you work alone, or you cover enough ground. You work far when you work in groups. Reflect on the lessons. Teachers may always reflect on lessons, sometimes in a formal process. Bring back on new approach that you feel you want to adapt on. After each lesson, take some time to assess what was done and what was not done. Think about what you need to change in future lessons. This is self appraisal. You need to do this for every lesson you've taught. It will help you to deliver better in the next class. Maximize your professional training. This is very, very, very critical and vital. You're here uh, at World Foundation Teachers Training, and there's other trainings that will be forthcoming. Take advantage of that opportunity. Do not let yourself just lay, lay, lie to waste. Learning, keep training yourself. Go online. Use YouTube, Google to learn new tools that will enhance your teaching skills. Some of you choose to teach this way. It's great. It fits in with your lifestyle. Many of you have been forced in teaching because of situation out of your control. You didn't get a job, a white collar job, a great company or your bank, and you say, "Why don't I just teach?" But while you're using teaching, we are in that profession. Make it. Make something out of it, okay? Good teaching involves desire to keep it moving. Bring that energy and personality into your online or virtual or in-person classroom. Invest a little time and energy into developing yourself. Even small efforts can have big impacts. Conclusion, keep educating yourself. The skills you learn, the resources you create, the flexibility you show, the effort, Act improvement, the calmness and level -headed, headedness, the acceptance of the situation, all these things can help you in a practical sense as a teacher and can be really be appreciated by your school head or principal. Thank you so much for having me. I'll be taking questions on the chat if you have any questions. But if you don't, my colleague Susan will take it over from you. Thank you. And my apologies for um, breaking transmission. Okay, thank you very much, Lovett. I hope you can hear me. Love, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so we're looking at the chat to see if we, if you have any questions for Lovett, just let us know. If you have any questions, Let's say you don't understand your teaching styles. Um, what can you do to improve your teaching style? She has touched all that, but if you feel um, there are one of the things you really need clarifications on, please do well to put the questions on the chat box and we'll react to that. Okay. So you're waiting a few minutes more for more questions. Do you have any questions? Please put on the chat. If we don't have any questions so that we know that we are on the same um, path, just put no questions. Thank you very much. Or just no questions so that if you have a question, put questions. I want to see on the chat so that we know we are on the same um, pace. If you don't have a question, just say no questions on the chat so that I can continue. Afanami, are you ready? Okay, lovers, I think there's a question for you. Okay, all right. Um, yes, that's a very good question. We'll be attending to this in our next class where we'll tie learning style back to teaching style. Yes. Okay. Teaching style has a lot to do with the teach, uh, student's learning ability or learning intelligence or learning type. Okay. Thank you. All right, all right. thank you very much. All right, Afonima, are you there? I'm coming. Give me one, one minute. Okay. So while we're waiting for Fonime to come up, um, those persons that joined us late due to one reason or the other, please, can you put on the chat box? Let's know where you're calling from. For instance, my name is Susan. 
and you will just type Susan Calabas, Susan Akwaibo, Susan Lagos. Let's know your name. This is an online class. So let's know your name and where you're joining us from. This will help us. We want to know where you're joining us from. Let other persons know. You know what I can say? You, you can make a friend here. Yeah? So let's look at the chat box together. Let's know. Okay, Atunuke from Abuja also. Atunuke, welcome. That's a seasoned educator. Okay, she's one of our facilitators, by the way. Um, I'm still looking at the chat. Okay, no questions. Edi from Porta Court, Ihai Njoku Abba. I hope I pronounced your name well. Forgive me if I didn't. Okay. So who else? Um, let's. So the truth is, you can see that. Okay. Um, good child residing in a number states. Awesome. Okay. So I think our phone is ready for us now. A lot of us have used Microsoft Word, and a lot of us um, know that. You can use Microsoft Word to create your lesson notes. Now, there are a few things you don't know about Microsoft Word that you're getting to know about Microsoft Word, the tips, the skills. If you already know how to use Microsoft Word in detail, please bear with us. Yes. She's gone. She's gone. Some teachers that will learn um, skills. Often, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So let me briefly introduce Afonime. Afonime is a seasoned educator. And she's a program officer at WOW Foundation. She's a STEM educator. She loves teaching and she loves educating teachers and the young ones into STEM technology. Afonime, so you have the floor so you can continue. Okay, yeah. hello, everyone. I see you from Abia. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, hello team members and all the participants. Thank you. So today we'll be talking about MS Word. I know some people, you've already started doing MS. If you've been doing MS Word, no problem. And if today is going to be your first time, there's still no problem. So I'll just walk you through. And um, at the end of the session, we might be able to do hands on on MS Word. So today my topic is using MS Word as an educator. What do you think is MS Word? Can somebody help me? Just type it in the chat session or you can raise your hand. What do you understand by MS Word? Yeah, precious. Please unmute yourself, I'm listening. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. I think MS Word is an application that helps us teach others and also type information that we don't want to be handwritten and also to make it more neat and eligible. Okay, thank you. That's a good one. Thank you, Precious. Yes, Umo Kalma, good child. Yeah, let me hear your view. Hey, good evening. Good afternoon, ma. Okay. Okay, sorry. I'm hearing you. Okay, uh, uh, MS Word, as his name Im implies, Microsoft Word is a word uh, process application that enables okay. the user to edit, to create, and print out documents. So, with this oh. MS Word as an application software, it will help you to edit tests, to modify tests as well. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you, good child. Thank you. So you can see the, most of you know about MS Word, and you know, um, let me quickly run you through the versions of MS Word. The first MS Word was just Word One, and that was, um, I think, in nineteen ninety six or thereabout, if I'm not mistaken. That was when e MS Word was invented by Microsoft. But now we can see that we have MS Word everywhere, even on your smartphone. You can actually use MS Word for um, smartphone to edit, to do anything that you want to do. So as it's evolving, I know at the end of the day, maybe you have MS Word on your smartwatch <laughs> very soon. So um, you can also start by inventing that if you don't mind, and Microsoft will employ you. 
So today we'll be talking about MS Word. MS Word is the word processor document. You know, you can call it anything um, aside text editor. You can also use it as a mathematician in the house. You can use MS Word for your teaching as well. Even if you're using, um, even if you're a science-based tutor, you can also use MS Word. As an MS Word goes round, it covers all areas of education. This, this. So I'll be running you through MS Word while you um, discover whatever you want to use your own MS Word for. Okay, so MS Word is an important application for education purposes. And in this digital world, you can see that um, even if you have iPad, you can also edit on MS Word, even if it's MacBook, even, even if it's a um, smartphone, any form that, in fact, that your messages, that your SMS that you use on your phone is also another version of MS Word, okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right, perfect. If you cannot hear me, just wave your, somebody's raising, good child, are you still raising your hand or it was previous? Previous, previous. Okay, all right, okay. So MS Word now is so sophisticated that you can use it anywhere. You can use it for, like now we have Google Docs that is serving as MS Word, but on Google platform. Before MS Word, there's something um, in that holding days um, computer, there was something called Notepad. That was what we were always using. You know, when you are trying to write anything, edit anything, you know, that is what we were using. But now it has even gone beyond that. And I know that um, different versions have been launched, but you can also use what version suits you. Hope everybody's hearing me. I'm not talking to myself. Yes. Okay. Perfect. We can hear you. Oh. Me. We can hear you. All right. All right. So you can also use MS Word to facilitate to facilitate basic graphic design. You know, you can also use it as your statistical report. Um, and also, there's also um, this this one is only a, a good one that you can actually check your spellings, grammar check, all sorts of checks that you want to do on your MS Word, even on your smartphone. You can do that. Then there are other different features on that MS Word that will actually help you in your teaching program. So where do you want to, where will you find or start Microsoft Word? First and foremost, I think um, students sent everyone on this call um, an email to download MS Word. So if you if you downloaded MS Word, please just say yes on in the chat, in the chat, or you raise your hand. Let let me know if you downloaded MS Word, or you already have it in your system. I'm waiting. Everyone has MS Word on their system. Or you're going to do this after the call. No response. I responded on the chat. Got okay. it already. Yes. All right. Okay, perfect. So we can go home. So we are going to start from, if you have your system with you, you can actually start from the start menu if you are using Windows. I have it on my smartphone. My system is okay. bad. All right, so you can actually use it from your smartphone as well, since you've downloaded it from um, wherever to your smartphone. Okay, thank you. Have you launched? Precious, have you launched? Have you launched the MS Word? Oh, you've been yes. using it already. Okay, okay. So from your start menu, that is where you can actually start your, um, we, we have something called um, Microsoft Office. That is where the different types of Microsoft um, templates can be found. So we have MS Word, MS Excel, PowerPoint, all those things. But we are, today we are going to be concentrating on MS Word. So from your start menu, please click on MS Word. If you've already installed You've downloaded, installed, and you've launched.
Can I go on? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Christina, can I go on? Madam Christina, can I go on? Okay. So on, um, on my screen here, we have the Microsoft interface. I'll just run you through the, um, the interface here. You can see the red button, the, this particular where my cursor is, that is what we call the Microsoft Office button. We also have the quick access toolbar. That's where you have your undo, your undo button on the tax bar there. And going down, we have the status bar. That's where you can find your um, the your lines, your toolbar, your view toolbar. You can either change it to um, a print view or um, what is this called now? You can either change it. Um, maybe you want the the page layout. Maybe you want the layout to be. Um, in percentage, maybe 50 or 100, you can actually use that particular view, to, um, view toolbar to increase the percentage of your screen, your Microsoft screen. Then we also have the dialog box. This one is actually the launcher. That is where you can actually launch whatever dialog you want to um, use on your Microsoft Word. We have the title bar as well. Then we have the group where you can actually put in your headings, your spacing, depending on what you want to write. You know, you can put no spacing or you can actually leave the spacing depending on what you want to write. Maybe you want to do a document or you just want to change the styles of your document. Can I go on? Any question? Yes, Marcy. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Christina. All right. Okay, so we also have the ribbon. Under the ribbon, we have what we called the inside the page layout, different references. Then the mailings, you can actually, um, there's something under Microsoft Word those days before the email came up. You can actually use your mail. You can actually insert mails on your Microsoft Word and launch. And whoever you're sending the emails to will get the email. But now because of the um, emails version, you don't even go to that part anymore. So you can actually use your uh, Microsoft Word, type whatever you want to type and copy it straight to the email. Or you can actually go to your email settings and do whatever you want to do, write your emails and send to people that you want to send your emails to. So there's something we called, what you see is what you get to display. Whatever you type on your Microsoft Word is what you get. If, if, if you're using italic or bold, control B for bold, if you're using that, that is what you will get. If you're using capital letters, that is what you get, you know. If you're using um, small letters, the lower cases, that is what you actually get. And whatever you're typing, there's this, um, this features of spell check. I can actually... King Ere, please, can you mute? King Ere, please, can you mute? Okay, thank you. So there's also... Um, this version of um, Microsoft, I, I recall there was this particular version that if whatever you type into your Microsoft Word, it will just take it, there's no autocorrect, but this particular version now, Microsoft, Microsoft Word, I've done a very amazing thing such that your index, you can actually put in your paragraph anywhere you want to. And you know, and still same. But there are times that after typing, after copying and pasting somewhere, everything is scattered. So that is when. Let me quickly take you back to the picture. That is when you have to go back to this no spacing. See here, where my cursor is dancing. 
you can click there and also do whatever you want to do. If that is after all your characters have been scattered. So now we'll quickly talk about the um, alignment. You know, like this document I'm showing to you, you can see how it is being aligned side by side. After typing, whoever created this document aligned it such that it can fit into the purpose. Um, the, it can also be able to minimize space. You can see this alignment. If you go through to the other side, copy, everything is aligned side by side. And we also have something that we call justification. So you can also justify your documents after typing. Maybe there are times um, there are times that after creating and editing your documents, you click on alignment and everything is not giving you what you want. You know, it's not giving you what exactly you want on this particular page. All you need to do is to go back and you know justify. Let me take, let me put my cursor where justification is. So that you can also practice it maybe during this call or after this lesson on your laptop or your phone. You see this, you see this thing here where my cursor is, where my cursor is dancing. That is where your alignment and justification is on this particular part. So you can see one is highlighted for us here. So you can you can either align left or align right or justify. So by the time you put your cursor on it, you'll see the left alignment or right alignment. Or you can also put it in the middle. It depends on what you actually want. And by the time you justify, all your documents will come. You can see this dot here, yeah? all this dot well aligned. Everything will just be placed perfectly for you. Then from there now, you can also go to no spacing. Maybe you don't want the space on your material like this spacing now this this space in here is quite fine so you can actually move on without doing anything but if you feel you don't like the spacing you can either go back to you can either go back to the no spacing see this no spacing after that normal that has been highlighted you click on it and choose the number of spacing you want you know you start from 1.0 down 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 to it depends on what you actually want. Then in copying, we have um, what we call control plus C on your system, on your laptop or your, on your desktop. Just locate control button. You hold it down and press C. That is control C. It will give you copy to just, but before you copy anything, you have to highlight. Highlight is control plus A. You hold down your control button and click A. But you, before you even do the control A, you put your cursor at the beginning of the document. You can see this is the beginning of my document. Let's say I want to um, copy this particular page here. I'll bring this cursor to the beginning of the page, be, beginning of the document I want to copy, press down and I'll drag. And dragging means that you press, you, you, after dragging, that means you highlight, there, there will be a small color, a blue color showing you on your document. Then from there, you can click on Control and A, which, which can I either highlight, which will highlight for you. Then you now press Control C to actually copy. But if you want to copy the document, so if you want to cut the document, good child, you want to ask a question? No, no. no. Okay, all right. So if you want to cut the document, maybe you don't want this document here, this particular part here, you either put your cursor at the beginning, highlight it and press Control plus X. Then from there, you cut it off and take it to another part of your document, depending on what you really want to do. I'm trying to go back to the diagram so that I can show you where the cut button is. And the copy, if I can cite it, fine. But if not, you can see it on your system. You can check and you'll see it there. I'm still looking through.
I can't find it. I can't find it on this particular picture, but it's always there. You see the, um, there's one that looks like the scissors, that's control X. If you put your cursor, if you hover your cursor on it, it will show you cut. And if you call over, there's another one that is copy. If you cover your cursor on it, it will show you copy, then you click on it. Then the bullets are numbering. This is my favorite part of MS Word. Maybe you are trying to do a presentation, a teaching, instead of you know just putting the dash um, form, you can actually go to your bullet and pick and it will give you either a star or number. You can either number, see it here. See it here, my, um, I'm trying to hover my cursor on it. That's somewhere there. See it's this side, one, two, three. You know, if you click on this particular cursor or this one, it will just show you. So you can pick any bullets that you want to highlight your, So you can actually under um, justification and alignment, there's something called format on our toolbar. No, sorry, on our status bar, not toolbar. Toolbar is one down on our status bar. Because on a tight toolbar, sorry. Status bar is here down. So you so view your toolbar somewhere down on the right side of your status bar. So on your title bar, on your title bar, we have format. Format means it's, it can take you from any look that you want. You can either change the color of the background or you change the color of the font or whatever you want to do. Maybe like this one, now you can see that um, this one is actually bolded. The format is actually bolded. So you can highlight it like I told you. You can hold down your cursor at the beginning of the um of the passage. So if you want to use the format button on the on your title bar there, so all you need to do is to just come here. You see these colors here on that front. That's where you can actually format your document. You can change the color. You can change the font styles that you want. Anything that you want to do. It can be easily done. Just practice it after this call. And you see you design different kind of documents. And at the end of the day, and you also, also notice, note that practice makes perfect. After this call, if you don't practice, you might not be able to work on Microsoft Word. And if you keep on, um, you know, when you are working on Microsoft Word, don't use just one hand. I know there are some people with just fingers that they'll use your tool and practice it as if you are doing a short and typing. And before you know, it, within one week or two weeks, you're good. You're good to do anything you want to do on your Microsoft Word. And for people doing um, teaching mathematics, you can use Microsoft Word. There are um, tools there under Microsoft Word that you can actually use to create um, your lesson plan for math biology, that's different kind of designs that you can use. Then a font, let's talk about fonts. I was trying to, okay, let me show you. Okay, let me have this. Okay, so um, let's talk about fronts. I was trying to open another system so that I can show you, can do a practical session at the end of this call. So a front, 
I lined on this document, if you can see my screen, is that a font is this type of design for text that can bring in any letter and number or symbols found on your keyboard. You can either arrange your fonts from formal to any, you can scatter it anyhow you want it. So you can actually use a capital letter or a small letter, depending on what you want to do. So we have italized um, fonts. We have bolded fonts like this one now on this justified, left justified. Sorry, I'll stop sharing my slide now. Let me, let's quickly do a practice session. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Can you see my screen? Can you see the on screen? Yeah. I want to use the screen. Yeah. Okay, so um, on the title bar here, Okay, let me start from court. You are not seeing your screen, not following me. Okay, they're not seeing. They share the other screen you're using. Okay, they're sharing, it's coming up. Okay. okay. Can you see this one now? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, there's something we're talking about, cut, copy. So I'm trying to over my, my cursor on it. You see that scissors? That is cut. That's your cut button. Then if you want now, let me quickly type anything. Now I want to copy. See, I'm bringing my cursor. You can see my cursor has changed. My cursor has changed to a straight line with head and bum bum. So from here now, I'll just put my cursor at the beginning of my typed document and I'll press my left key, drag. This is what we call highlight. Can you see? So from here now, from a highlight, you can see that my cut and copy button was silent before it was not really showing but because i've already highlighted it's showing so i can click on cut when i click on cut it disappeared then i take it back by clicking on paste now if i want to if i don't want to press this particular button on my um title bar all i need to do is to just highlight before you cut or copy anything you must highlight first you must highlight. So I'm bringing my cursor to the beginning of the document. Then I drag. This dragging that I'm doing is called highlight. Then I click on control and C. I'm holding down my control button and I'm clicking on C. I've copied. Now I want to take it to another place so that I can paste what I copied. I'll pray, I'll press control, then press down V. So this is what I copied. Now I don't want this anymore. I highlight again. Highlight means I bring my cursor to the beginning of the document and I highlight, press control. Okay, don't let me press control now. Let me go back to cut. It's gone. So that is what I was talking about, cut and copy. So anything that you're doing on your Microsoft Word, Microsoft Word can actually be so much fun that you get lost while practicing. Then also in the no spacing. So now what I cut now, let me duplicate it. Now here, I'm trying to remove the spacing from this. I'll go to this um, title bar. Here you see the no spacing. There's no spacing there. If I click on this no spacing, it will open up. You can see that my spacing have reduced now. My spacing have reduced here. So I can also take it back to normal. You can see after clicking normal, 
it has taken me back to my previous document. So there's so many things that you can do on your Microsoft Word. Now let's try and um, I, um, align and justify. Already this document is already highlined. So I'm trying to scatter it so that we can highlight perfectly. Before you do anything, oh, don't forget to highlight. From highlights, you click on your, you can see it's already aligned here. It's already aligned left. Now I want to align it to the right. You can see it has changed from where it was to another side. Now, if I want to take it to the middle, so these are what you can do. Maybe you're trying to create an editing for your document or for any slide or for a presentation. You can actually work on this. Then now I want to justify it. You can see now it's the, the lines, the spacing are well justified. So after typing a long document, this is what you can actually do. Then now you can actually put a title I've not clicked on it, but I'm just hovering my cursor on it. So it's giving me a title heading already. Now see the subtitle. So it depends on what you want to do. You can work on Microsoft Word and still catch fun while at it. Now let's go to the color changing, the font colors. From here now, I can choose any color I want. You can see it has changed to um, blue that I selected, you can, um, but I will not be able to do anything now because my, I already removed the highlights. So I'll go back to highlighting and click on my font color. Now let's say, let's do red. So you can do anything you want to do. Let's say we want to change the background. On the background too, don't forget that you have to highlight first, then it will change the background for you whatever you want to do and when it's changing the background of your font it does not change your font color you can see we still have red on the background of the line that we chose so it depends on what you want to do and also you can do for people doing maths mathematics tutors you can actually use this particular method to do maybe your math maybe you want to do raised to power or anything you can use this or maybe you want to do base all you need to do is just click on it. Okay, so thank you. Let's go back to um, the other screen. Let me stop sharing, stop sharing, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we are back. So I hope you were able to understand the header, the justify, the left justify, all those things. Everything is highlighted, highlighted here. You have Control Z, Undo, Control C, Copy, Control V, Paste, Control P, Print, Control C, Copy, Control X, Cut. You know. Okay. So um. I've also talked about the text. Then if you want to print, there's something we call print preview. From print preview, you can actually, be, maybe after typing all your documents, you can actually go back to your, before printing, there's something called print preview on your Microsoft Word. Then um, don't forget after typing anything before, as you're typing, be saving. If you typed one line, save. That's control S, control C, click on save save the command, save anything you want to save. Even, um, even if you make a mistake, save so that you don't lose all your work. If you don't save, you're not, by the time the NEPA, you know, in where we are, there's always shortage of electricity. Maybe something happened, you don't see that all your work is gone. So always save your work. Thank you. If you have any question, please, I'm waiting for you in the comment section. Hi, thank, thank you, you very much, Afonime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, Precious, you have a question. You can unmute yourself and, and say something. Yes. Yes. Uh, I didn't know what she pressed to duplicate the line and what control Z stands for. 
Okay. Often will you answer? Should I answer? Please answer. Okay, control Z means undo. Let's say you've done something and you don't actually want to do it again. So you undo what you've done. That's control plus Y. And sorry, control yes. plus Z. That control plus Y means you want to redo that thing you've already done before. So before we move to our next class. I'd have said I would have showed you some pointers, but because of time, if we still have time, I'll share my screen towards the end of the training. I will do something real quick Please about. Like... Hello, ma'am. Hello, precious. Okay, that will continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, I asked. Your, your network is breaking. We can't hear you. Okay, sorry about that. I said, what did she press to duplicate the lines, the sentences? She was duplicating it, but I didn't really get what she pressed to do it. Okay. Now, there are different ways to duplicate it. Ophanome, will you answer? Ophanome? Okay, let me even ask everybody listening, please, what will she do to duplicate it? Because I know of three ways you can use to duplicate what she did. But I actually want to hear people on this call. If you know what she can use to duplicate you have something I want to duplicate it on Microsoft. So what will you do? There are three or four ways to do that. If you want to say something, because okay, somebody said control, copy, and then paste. Another person, we are all learning. I'm looking at the control chat. V. Control V is actually to paste. I have, I have written my name is Susan on Microsoft Word. I want to copy Susan. I want to duplicate it. I want to duplicate it again. So what do I do? From beginning to the end, not just end, end part. If I place, if I use control V and there's nothing there on the on the cache, it won't copy anything, it won't paste anything rather. Okay, another person is control D, duplicate. Okay, your teacher will answer that question. No? Okay, you have to copy first before you paste. Awesome. Okay, another method is not only copy. How far am I going to help them out? Hello, how far am I? You can drag and drop. I wonder how you drag and drop. How do you drag and drop on Microsoft Word? Let's can you explain that dragging and dropping? We are all learning. I'm learning. Hello, Chus. Can you explain what you mean by drag and drop? We are going to move to our next session very, very soon. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, now when you highlight, after you have highlighted, depending okay. if you're highlighting all, or you're highlighting a selected um, text, okay. after you have done that, you hold down the control button and then with okay. you, while you hold down the control button, you hold down your left click button on the mouse and then drag it to the location where you want it to paste and then you get what you want. So what is it, Thank you. okay. All right, thank you. Navigation button or your arrow keys. It's actually called arrow keys, not navigation keys. So those four keys on your keyboard that faces up, up, down, left, right, is actually called arrow buttons or arrow keys. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Atinuki, are you here? Hello, Atinuki. Hello. Hello, Susan. How are you? I'm here. I'm fine. Okay. So we'll be bringing up our next um, speaker or facilitator. She's a seasoned educator. She was once a participant like you, and then she became one of our go to. She's a resource person when it comes to ethic. So like, there's no ethic to you give to her okay, that she doesn't deliver. So she's going to be taking you through series of edtech tools um so for today we are starting now we normally build a temple at our foundation we start from very simple from tomorrow we'll take the step a little bit higher today is the foundation a lot of you know microsoft word a lot of you probably you're asking yourself what am i doing here i know microsoft word now okay so please so we are building it we are taking example from A, B, C, like that. So Atunuke is here to introduce us to Google Classroom. Some of you already know Google Classroom. If you have not joined our Google Classroom, 
sorry, yes. I'm rushing because of time. So if you've not joined our Google Classroom, please join our Google Classroom. Educators, please check your mail. I have to beg some persons today to check their mails. This particular, if you want to be a digital educator, you make technology your best friend and checking your email is one of the prerequisites of this training. Okay, Atunike, you can share your screen. So I'm going to hand you over to Atunike. Now, and if you have any questions on Microsoft Word, drop it here. I'll be posting a link where you can learn more about Microsoft Word on Google Classroom. So I'm handing you over to Atunike. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Or good evening. Um, my name is Atunike. And like what uh, Susan said, don't mind how I'm not a pro. I'm just uh, following what they have taught me. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can. OK. Um, my session will be more practical because, um, um, you know, like what she said, it's an hands-on thing. You need to practice it every time. If not, it, it won't be part of you. You won't, you won't get it. So you just have to practice and practice so that you know how to go about it. So uh, let me ask a question. How many of you have worked with Google Classroom before? Hello, please, can you drop it in the chat? How many of you have worked with Google Classroom before? Any response? Hello. Okay, yes, once I've worked it before. Okay, thank you. Good. Um, because you have worked with it before, it's going to be much easier for me. I have but not. Okay, thank you, Ma. You have not. Okay, good. You will be seeing how it's been done now, Ma. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do. The first please, thing you're going to sorry, do. Please, let me interrupt you a little. Please, can we all mute okay. Thank you very much. Elijah, please help me mute them. Thanks. Okay, I think okay. continue. Okay, um, the first thing you're going to do is that you must have a Gmail account. You must have a Gmail account. So when you have a Gmail account, um, you call. I'm going to. Can you? I hope you can see my screen, right? Yes, we can see your yes. screen. So this is my mail. I, I have actually have different uh, Gmail for different Google Classroom. Sorry. <laughs> so this is my Gmail, my personal email, because I also have a school's Gmail. I teach in a school. And we use uh, Google Classroom in my school. We use Google Classroom in my school. Um, we have a G Suite, uh, G Suite, whereby everything we do is being centralized using G Suite. So when you have, when you open your Gmail account, you come to this nine dots. Can you see this nine dots? So you click on it. By the time you click on it, by the time you click on it, all the apps of Google will come up, especially the ones that we use frequently. So you will look for the one that has to do with classroom. Then you click on it. Automatically, it will open up a page like this for you. So when it opens up, this is the Google Classroom, this is the page. Okay, um, because I have some classes on it already, but this particular Gmail that I went to, the classes will come up. Okay, uh, this is another class. This is my person. This is my school's um, account, in which I have different classes under me. You know, just different classes. So I teach chemistry, but um, I'm linked with other subjects one way or the other. So I have different classes for it. So this is my personal school's email, uh, school's Google class. So when you open that, the classes will come up like this. So if you want to create a class, if you want to create a class, what you need to do, I don't want to use this email. Okay, let me see, any of, the, any of my other email. Okay, let me use it. Okay, let me see, this is, the one, this is the one we created for this purpose. This is the one we created for this purpose. So if I want to join or create a class like this, this is the class 
that we are in that we created for this purpose. How many of you have joined this class? Let's see. And let me let me even teach you how to join if you have not joined. Okay, I we have a link on the student. chat. Yeah? Yes, I posted the link on the chat. Okay, thank you. But they can actually go to their mail and also check on also join. Exactly. Yes. And um, apart from that, too, if they're ready, if they're ready to join now, let me display the link, the, the code for the class. This is the code for the class. So if you have followed what I have done by clicking the nine uh, button here, go to Google Classroom, click on it. It's going to ask you to join a class somewhere here. Let me show you. This is the code. So I'm you're not sharing your screen. You're not sharing your screen. I'm not sharing my screen. Yes. Oh, sorry. So I was sharing my screen. You were before. Okay. Sorry. Am I sharing now? Yes, you are. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So if you're if you're going to join a class now, what you need to do is come to this um, plus sign here. You click on the plus sign. If you are creating, you click on create. But if you are joining for the sake of this class, for this training that we are in, now, you click on join class. Then the code can be entered there. The code for the class can be entered there. Then automatically you can join the class. But if you are not joining, if you are creating as a teacher. What you need to do is click on this. Then, if I'm too fast, let me know. But I'm trying to take it step by step. Uh, you click on create. Then uh, click on this. Then continue. Then um, now that uh, most most of us are already into blended learning, you know, bringing in technology into classes, we. The Google Classroom is just like every, like every other class, like your normal class. What we do in class is exactly what you do in Google Classroom. You can even see your students using the Meet link. So it's everything. You know, you give assignments, they return the assignments, you mark, you grade your students, they see their scores, you do correction, you know, you take attendance, you want to take attendance. You know, everything that is being done in a normal setting of a class, is being done in Google Classroom. So to create a class, I'm, I'm, I'm just, let me teach you how to create a class. So to create, to create this class, let me just name it, uh, anything you want to name it. Let's just say training class for now. Okay, I said, okay, please, you hold yes. on. Okay. Somebody said, um, please, you're running too fast. That's from Margaret. Okay. Um, I'm lost. So Margaret, just okay. let us know where you're lost. We want to carry everybody along. This is a foundational class. From tomorrow will not be should I say this patient? We want everybody to start on the same space. Tomorrow we'll take kids a level higher. So please, everybody must get it at this point or we'll be lost. Okay, oh, where are you now? Thank you very much. I'm actually trying to um, create and get to where you are at this point to be able to join the class. Okay, because, have, you, have um, you opened your email? Have you opened your Gmail? I'm, I'm on my Gmail now. So okay, I, I if you're on your class, Gmail, I think you do not know Yes, please. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Can please. you see my screen, no. right? Yes, I can see your screen. So you come to this nine dot. Can you see? Okay. Then when you I'm click on it. My, my, my phone is not displaying that. Okay. So the phone is not this you're using your phone yes let me use the system now i'm using a laptop okay. with you but i'm actually so trying using... to practice with the phone but i okay. can do that with my laptop now yes okay, okay. if you are using a phone you need to download your you need to download classroom on your phone for you to be able to classroom. use that effectively okay. okay so but with my mail 
So when your mail, when you get your mail, can you see this nine dot? This nine dot actually has a lot of uh, all apps that are being used by Google. So you can link it because everything are, are being linked together. Everything are being linked together with that particular Gmail that you opened it with. Okay. So are you there? Have you seen Classroom? Margaret, have you seen Classroom? Let, let, let me not keep all those waiting. I'll, I'll follow up. Okay. Uh, so thank, when you see you. the Classroom, okay. you are expected to click on the Classroom. The way you click on the Classroom, this interface comes up. But like I said, because I have different classes that have opened, that is why I have it on my screen this way. But yours might be blank or asking you to join our DTT class, this present class that we've already um, sent the link to you. And if not, you can click on this plus to join the class. You click on join class, the code has been sent, or you click on the link in your email, automatically takes you to the Google Classroom. Um, so I want to go to the class that way. Okay. okay. This is the class that uh, we created for this um, training. If I click on it, when I click on it, as a teacher, I get to see the stream, the classwork, people, and grades as a teacher. But as a student, I don't get to see the grades. So on your own platform, you're not going to see the grade. So I'll be talking as a teacher now on what to do. So this is an interface. This interface is what you'll be working with. Now, if I come to these three lines here, it's going to show me all the classes that um, I created or I'm a teacher in. And if I'm a student, it's also going to come up here. Yes, archive classes in case I have archive classes. Okay, um, let me just show you. Okay, like this, this is uh, a created one that has a lot of content that has been done before. So um, I have a list of classes that I'm in. Then I have um, archived classes, classes that have been archived that I don't longer use will come up here. Can you see? I can still bring them back until I delete it. I can I can bring that and restore them. But for now, I don't think I want to restore them. So let me go back to my classes. So okay. So that is uh, these three lines. Then you have the stream. The stream is like a, for a place of information. Today we are going to have chemistry class. So, so, so time to so, so time. You put it there. Oh, what we are teaching today is this. You put it there. It's, it's, it's a way, it's a place to pass information for your student to see. Okay. Then, then the class work. When you click on the class work, just the way as a teacher, you organize your classes. The class work too is a place that you organize your lessons. I'll be flipping to show you um, some things I have done personally with the Google Classroom. For example, this is a class. Let me just show you one of my class. Okay. Now, this is like a class that I have students in, real students. Um, this is a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, this is the stream where information are being sent. Then this is classwork. Now, if you can see, I classified my uh, my classes based on week, weekly, week, weekly weeks, uh, week one, third term. You know, they are being arranged. That is what I have done in the last term that we just ended. We just finished third term. So that is what I have done. So uh, and uh, based on everything that I need to do in a particular class will be put under each week. You know, will be put under each week. I teach chemistry. So I have different things that I've done on it. So they, it has been arranged. So when I come, I know where I'm going to, I know what I'm doing. I take attendance in my class. 
I give them clusters, I give them classwork, they give me assignment, I grade them, you know, I have people in the class. So this is like a typical class. So coming back to our class that we created for this purpose. Now, if you go to people, you have, these are people that are in the class, the teachers, how to join, how you can invite teachers, you can invite your fellow teachers. For example, Susan created this class and invited me. So to invite teachers, you need to click on this, then you can put in the email, email of the teacher and you invite the teacher. So you can have two, four, as more teachers you can, have, you can have, you can, you wish for in a particular class. It's very possible. Like my school, because we do a lot of monitoring, you know, the teacher will create a class, the principal will have to join or probably the VP or the HOD to see what is going on in that class. So all these have been uh, allowed. Then you have students. So you teachers, teachers are expected to um, invite students and through codes or through links. I can decide to invite by typing anybody's email. You know, I invite, I try to invite my, myself. I didn't see it again. Okay, so let me, I think I have another email address I can put. Um, I invite myself. Uh, So this, because this mail exists, automatically comes up. Um, I click on that, I invite student. Automatically, the student gets the invitation in the student's email. So this is, this is coming up now because the student has been invited but has not accepted the invitation. I can decide to remove student too. I can decide to remove students. Let me see. Okay, I invited myself somewhere here too. So if I don't want this invitation, I mark it and ask for the action to be taken on it. So I want to, I can email the student and I can also remove the student. Maybe you are disturbing my class. I don't want you again, get out. So, you know, you can do things like that. It's your class, you take uh, absolute control of anything you want to do in the class. Then you have the grades. That is when you give them classwork, they, they return it, it's being generated. Um, you know, out of 100, you get your scores, everything. You see it on a plain, on a plain uh, uh, sheet like this. Then another thing we need to know is that you can actually do a setting of your class. Yes, let me go back. Up. Okay, see this setting box. You can, when you click on it, you can do the setting of your class. What you want and how you want that class to look like the name of the class, put the name of the class. The name is there, you can edit the name. You can, uh, the subjects, if it's chemistry, physics, anything you want to put, you put it there. Then this is um, the invite codes. You can turn it on. That was why I was able to see the code on the stream when you turn it on. Then you can invite, the invite link, you can copy it and paste it and give it, send, it, send it to someone else. Then uh, the display code too, I can display my class code. So that people can see. So if you want to go in as a uh, using the code, you can type this on the join class and uh, automatically you join the class. Now, the stream, what do I want for my stream? Students can post and comment. Do I want that? Mm -mm, I don't think I want it. I want students can only comment. It's my class. So I don't want, to, I don't want students to be posting. Let me be the one to post. So I click on students can only comment. And it, you can also decide to say, only teachers can compose and comment. But I don't think I like that. When you not <laughs> why would be, why would be, why would be that? It's only teacher that will post and also comment. So me, I, normally I prefer students can only comment. So teacher post, students comment. The class work on the stream too. I don't want it to be scattered. I prefer to hide my notifications. So when it comes, I see it's not, uh, I see it's organized not scattered on the stream. Then show deleted items. Only teachers can view delete, deleted items. Yes, I like it. So that uh, when they delete, I get to see what they delete. Then the grading too, depending on what you want, you can check and read through it and let it suit what you, are, what you want the class to do. 
okay um, when all that is done you save it the difference between i think there's a difference between um um this this email this gmail with google classroom and the g suit on my own school's email on my own school's google classroom i can actually i can actually send a meet link to the student which they will automatically join let me see okay can you see the meet link is attached to my school's google classroom because we have a g suit so can make it visible so instead of going to meet click on it and send it a link to the student i can automatically generate a link from here and um, voila the students we have the result it will come up here if if you have that it will come up here so the students will just click on it and automatically they get to we get to see each other like this that we are doing now now let's see what happens in the classwork per se where the teaching is actually being done okay this creates boss shows us a lot of tells us a lot of things if i click on it it's going to tell me what do you want to do the first thing i always do is click on topic to give me what topic uh, like a the way of organizing the class so let me just do this say day two tomorrow is day two which is a uh, 24th august uh, 2021. So can you see a day two has been created? So I can decide to move it down because I want the one, you know, I can decide to move it down or hop. Then that is to organize your class by creating topic. You can create assignments, post an assignment like this. I think I have an assignment for you already. This is an assignment it has not been posted you won't see it in your class until i post it and uh, because i'm a teacher i've drafted it so when it's time for me i go ahead and post it and i think let me just do that now so um if i want to post i click on this is what i want you to do um so i will just assign it that everybody gets to see it on their own page then do it and send it back to us following the instruction okay so that is how to do uh, to post something on google classroom as an assignment we can also have quiz assignment this comes in forms of a um, form of a form google form google form is also attached to google classroom so i can decide to do an objective test use google form on even a theory based question using google form then this is question Maybe I want to have define this and I want an instant answer. I can use question for it. Then this is material. Material is where resources are being sent to the student. They don't need to re, they don't need to respond. They can only comment, but they are not sending anything back to you. So you can send material, you know, uh, your notes, uh, maybe picture to read and comment on. It can be sent on material. Then you can have reuse posts. Now, because I have, if I have, if I have, if I have different classes in this uh, particular Google Classroom, I can click on reuse post. Maybe I have used a particular resource for one class, and I want to reuse it. It is very possible using Google Classroom. Um, so that is all about Google Classroom. Any question? Am I missing anything? Margaret, you want to say something? Um. Actually, okay, somebody asked a question that should talk about grading. How do you set grades in Google Classroom? Okay, thank you, Susan. To set grade on Google Classroom, automatic. Okay, for example, like this task that I've sent to you, by the time you all start returning it, and I, okay, let me go to edit, let's see. And probably I scored it because this is ungraded. So I can decide to put a score. Uh, I, will, I will delete it though. I can decide to put a 10 mark score. So by the time you send in your answers and I mark it, automatically comes up on grading system, on the grades. I will see it on the grades. All the students, can you see? It's telling me that uh, the pre-survey form, 
nobody has done it is there. So any score that I give you or we give you there, we automatically show there. And uh, it can be generated over 100. So you get your scores in. I think I've answered the question. Yes, you have. Okay, let me remove. Uh, Suzanne, we are not grading anybody. Are we grading anybody? Yes, we will grade them. But not that we'll give them scores, right? No, we'll not give them scores. So let's make it ungraded for now. <laughs> okay. Um, any question on Google Classroom? So a quick yes. one while we are waiting for questions. Um, our time is almost up. Mm, um, sure please that. note that before we give you assignments, We'll come to Google Classroom and see how many assignments you have turned in. Maybe Atunika, you show them how to turn in assignments okay, so that they know how to turn in the assignments. So you have to turn in your assignments. We'll look at, you have to do about 80% of all the assignments that will be given before you can get your certificate so that we can ascertain that you deserve and then our, our logo, our trademark is not diluted. I think I can continue. Yes. Okay. Um, for me to show you how to submit assignments, I think actually need to do that. But I need I need to be a student in that class. So uh, remember that I joined a class myself. I think I used one email to join a particular class. Where is it? Oh. Um, okay. Yes. So I'm going to go to that particular email. I have to go to that particular email so that I can um, join as a student. Uh, oh, Suzanne, can you? No, I have to. I have to join. I have to join, right? I just have to. Yes, join. you have to join. Mm. Sorry, please. We are exceeding beyond time. I'm very sorry. Max, in the next five minutes, we are rounding up. So please bear with us. In the next five minutes, we are rounding up. We started late. We waited five minutes before we started because we're waiting for people to join. So we are going, we are still within time frame. So in the next five minutes, we're rounding up. We are very sorry about that. Thank you for understanding. Thank you. Don't worry, I'll soon leave. Uh, I need to sign in to that particular email. So it's, it's a way of uh, recapping what I've done before or what I've said before. So um, if you are still having issues, oh, sh sorry, I need to sign out from the add another account. Okay, I need to sign in. Okay, so I'm going to put the, the email address that I. Please hide your password. Okay, all right. <laughs> you don't need to tell me. <laughs> oh. Oh, confirmation. Okay. Um, how do we do this? Not now. Let's see whether it will work. It will work now. Your new email address. Why is this tracing me? Okay, continue. Okay, uh, um, so this is this is like a new uh, an e the new email. So the the invite is not coming in. So what I need to do is just um, join class. So I will go to where is that class? So so I copy. Hmm. Where is the class again now? Okay. Check the last one. Okay. okay. Then join. So I'm joining as a student in this in this um, class. No, automatically I'm there as a student. So I, I don't get to see grades again. I don't get to see grades. So I'll go to classwork. Um that's it. Now, these are the things that have been posted. Remember that I created day two. A student will not see that. It's only the teachers that will see. So day one, if I have a form, I click on my form, submit my form. So let me just do this, that is my assignment. Review the assignment. 
Now, this comes up. I'm expected to copy the link and link and also, and also the class code. So I'm just going to use the class code. What I need to do is to submit it by clicking on this. Then um, where I want, okay, let me just go to Google Doc, paste it and submit it to, this, to the class. So, why did you open up? Where's the Google Doc? Can you see any Google Doc opening? No, it's not opening. Okay, it's, opening it's loading now. now. Okay, so it has already labeled it for me. I don't get faster uh, tasks to do. You know, I want to create a class. So um, I paste the code. That's the code. Um, I don't even need to share it. Go back to the class and say turn in. Turn in. Turn in. So automatically, the teacher get to see the assignment. So let's go back to the class. Okay, now this is the class that I'm in as a, I mean, as a teacher. So what I need to do is just, as a teacher, I'll come, uh, task to do. Can you see? I've turned in my assignment. And if I click on it as a teacher, I see, automatically see, as look at say, I've turned in the assignment. So this is what I turned in. If I click on it, it will display the class code for me as a teacher. So I can decide to score it. Can you see? This is what the teacher will see. So I want to score. Okay, because I did not put, uh, we didn't put a grading thing there. So automatically yeah. the grading sector won't come up. That over 10, over 20 won't come up. So I can send uh, a private comment. Well done, you know. And student get to see it. So it's been returned. Click on return. They see it, and uh, it's being graded automatically. All right. Thank you very much, Atumike. Yeah. Any question? Any question? We don't have time now. We are going to make use of double classroom. So, um, if you have any question, please put it on Google Classroom. We'll attend to your questions on Google Classroom going forward. So, thank you very much for those questions, Dr. John. Atumike, any last words? I, I, uh, the Google site, am I saying something? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I won't waste your time. Google site is a very lovely site. We use it in class to engage students in form of task, in form of presentation. Actually, Suzanne created this for, for the purpose of this training. It's not easy creating Google site, but it comes out very lovely. You, Suzanne will be teaching you, definitely not me. Suzanne will be teaching you how to use Google site. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very lovely. So I, I think the link will be sent on the on the Google Classroom, so I can have yes. a feel of what Google Sites can or what it looks like. Uh, okay. This is like a preview. It's still it's still in uh, motion, but it's like a preview uh, screen, mm. preview mode. Yeah. There's a preview mode of this. Is the first page we have the home page. Uh, what we have, what we do in Wow Foundations trainings. Um, a founder, a vice founder, you know, and uh, you have the schedule for today. This is the plan for today. So if you click on it, it gives you what we have in stock for today. So we're going to be adding more, you know, we have the two, the three, and so on like that. So the same thing, you can actually use it in your class as, you know, for example, I can have chemistry. I can decide to have year one, year two, year three in chemistry class, then different topics, different tasks. Then I think Suzanne will also do digital escape for you, not me. <laughs> then we have the <laughs> <laughs> she needs to buy decks. <laughs> then we have our facilitators. So you can just go in and see how uh, it looks like. We have our facilitators. All these have been can be done and created. You know, Suzanne actually sat down to do this. <laughs> very lovely. Very, very, very nice. So you can bring in your resources. Okay, so again, please go back to um, schedule. I think I posted, um, not, yes, go, not the one. Yes, go down. Okay. I posted for, somebody was asking about Google Classroom. Okay. I think I posted the training instructional materials for today's class. Yeah, please go down with the link. Okay, yes, so thank you. So you can you, watch, 
Yes, you can watch yes. that. So we'll be posting more of it. that. I'll post mm -hmm. one on Microsoft Word for those persons that really didn't get it, that need more on Microsoft Word. We're posting tutorial videos you can watch. And we can also post it on Google Classroom too. for them. You can okay, there's a WhatsApp um, platform. Yeah, you can also post it. Yes. Thank you very much. I'll do that, Atim, okay? All right, please, we'll be ending the One class now. Thing. Thank I... you very much. Elijah, okay. <laughs> Did you remove it? At the okay, the first something. For the day. Did you Sorry. remove it? The what? Did you remove it? The what? It was, it was um, huh? Okay, active participants. No, I yes. did not. It's on um week one. It's week one. Day one. Go to week one. Day one. Yes. You mean day one? Day right? one. Sorry. Day okay. one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so we need to yes. this. during this training. Now, this let me tell you what happens. What foundation awards people? In fact, the last time I was even jealous of the amount. Oh, let me not let me not let me not get the cash out of the bag. I was actually jealous of what they received as the most active participants. So now, how can you become an active participant? As you are given assignment, you are one of the persons that is doing the assignment. You come to class on time. You are engaged in class. Like today, I noticed um, troops was really engaging. So truth, if you actually want to be the most active participant or any other person, please go to your Google Classroom, do your assignment, turn it on time and do it well. Your picture will appear here. Your name will appear here. I will celebrate you in tomorrow's class. Thank you very much. Atunuke, any question? No, I'm actually the most uh, active participant today because I've submitted my assignment. So we can go to the class, you'll see my assignment today, right? <laughs> okay, Chuck says celebrate me small today. I celebrate you, Chooks, today. <laughs> All right, thank you for being active. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Right, thank I you hope you have gained something. Now. Okay, can we all uh, can I share stop sharing your screen? Let me see whether I can take a virtual picture and then we'll end the class. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, please turn on your video just briefly. Turn on your videos briefly. Briefly, briefly. Bri sorry, the class will not extend like this tomorrow. I'm very sorry. Very, very sorry. Okay, so just a quick one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, some persons are joining. I'm waiting for Rosalind, Rabbi, Eddie, Rabbi. Eddie, um, um, Samson. Samson. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, Elijah, thank you for standing in for me. He's behind the scenes. Probably you've seen him. Elijah, wave, let people see you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you very yeah. much. We appreciate it. Please, tomorrow, let's be on time. We don't do... Thank you. African Time in One Foundation. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something today. I hope. Well, yeah. I right, think. All right. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank like you. I can go ahead and, and thank you very much, Ms. Ms. All right. Ms. Thank, you right. thank you very much, everybody. So we'll be thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see everyone. you tomorrow on time. See you tomorrow. At the count of two, let's take this picture together. One, two, one, go. Did we really take it? Some people are going up. <laughs> I take it again. One, two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's okay. All right, Susan, thank you very much for being there. You've been a good facilitator. We appreciate your presence. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.